T minus 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines for power and lift off. Go bandwagon, go ADD 425. Vehicles pitching downrange. MOT chamber pressure is nominal. Falcon 9 has lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We're currently throttling down to prepare for Max-Q. The point of maximum aerodynamic stress is on the vehicle. Max-Q occurs in the lower atmosphere, where there's still enough air to create significant Power resistance telemetry nominal. against the rocket. This is when the pressure pushing against the rocket is at its highest point, and it's a key test of the vehicle's structural integrity. After Max Falcon 9 is supersonic. After Max-Q, the rocket continues to accelerate, but the air becomes thinner, reducing the stress on the vehicle as it climbs through the upper layers of the atmosphere. Max-Q. And there's the call-up for Max-Q. Merlin engines are back at full power, and we're out of the throttle bucket. From here on, even though velocity is rapidly increasing, the atmospheric density is decreasing, resulting in less loads on Falcon 9. Now we have several events coming up in quick succession, starting with Miko, followed by stage separation, back two. stage one flip, second engine start one, or SES one and the start of the boost back burn. Main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all nine Merlin 1D engines shut down to slow the vehicle down in preparation for stage separation, where the first stage separates from the second stage. Following that, the Falcon vehicle 9... Vehicle trajectory is nominal. The Falcon 9 first stage will then perform a flip maneuver as the MVAC engine on the second stage is in startup. Then we'll see the start of the boost back burn on the Falcon 9 first stage, followed by fairing separation, where the fairing will jettison from the second stage now, now that it's no longer needed to protect the payload once we're in space. And at our customer's request, we will not be showing fairing separation today. Stage separation confirmed. Stage one, boost back startup. And back startup. Fairing separation confirmed. And there we heard those events that happened back to back. Main engine cutoff, stage separation, stage one flip, Second engine start one, the start of the boost back burn on the first stage, and fairing separation. We should expect the end of the boost back burn shortly. The next major milestone coming up is the entry burn on our first stage, scheduled to occur at about T plus 5 minutes and 56 seconds. Falcon 9 will perform two more burns in order to land. The first of the two burns is two the, nominal trajectories. the entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the denser parts of Earth's atmosphere. It's similar to pumping the brakes on your car. Without this burn, we'd only be using the atmospheric drag alone to slow down Falcon 9, which adds extra stresses on the rocket. Little Merlin 1D engine will relight for that entry burn, and following the entry burn, the booster will go through its final burn, the landing burn, which should slow the vehicle down even more for a successful land landing. You'll notice the number four in today's mission name, indicating that this mission is our fourth dedicated rideshare mission to a mid-inclination orbit. Rideshare significantly 
increases access to space for small satellite operators around the world. While our transporter rideshare missions launch to a sun-synchronous orbit, bandwagon missions can accommodate even more small sats looking for rides to orbit, launching to a mid-inclination orbit and filling the gaps for our customers that wish to expand their coverage or complete unique objectives that aren't possible with sun-synchronous orbit. It's a little dark out, but you can see the silhouette of the grid fins. Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage that help steer the first stage as it returns to Earth. We're about 20 seconds away from the beginning of the entry burn. Stage one entry burn startup. There's the callout for entry burn startup on the Falcon 9 first stage. This burn is set to last about 20 seconds. Stage and two FTS is saved. And again is slowing down the vehicle in preparation for its final burn and landing. Stage one entry burn shutdown. And that concludes our entry burn. The first stage has Both one trajectories are nominal. The first stage has one more burn left to prep for landing. And as mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover this booster, targeting a landing at landing zone two, which is not far from our launch pad. The Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made of carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb. Placed symmetrically symmetrically around the base of the rocket, they'll deploy. Stage one FTS has saved. They'll deploy just prior to landing. Stage one transonic. Coming up within the next 18 seconds, we'll have the start of the landing burn at the first stage. The landing burn is the final burn of the Falcon 9 booster, used to reduce the remaining speed of the vehicle for a gentle and precise landing. Stage one landing burn. And there you heard that call out for the landing burn start on the Falcon 9 first stage. This is the final burn that this booster will see before touching down on landing zone two. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. And there we have it, another successful first stage landing at landing zone two, marking the third landing for this specific booster. Now we have about two minutes remaining before the next event, which is SECO-1, or second engine cutoff one. That's the first of three planned events where the second stage Merlin vacuum engine shuts down and restarts after a coast period. Again, we'll do this three times before all payloads are deployed. <laughs> 